Hey, good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Adir Ran. I'm the leading the blockchain and open source innovation here in Israel. So the idea here is really to take blockchain from an idea to a production. We know that this is a very, you know, it's really easy to talk about how cool is blockchain should give us a lot of money and uh, reduce cost and build trust. But we still don't see, especially around enterprises, a lot of blockchains on production. So this is exactly the tension that Microsoft saw and decided to try and give you some sort of a service or a cloud solution to help you accelerate that. So I also got the, the, you know, the opportunity to be first one to talk about blockchain. So I'm going to do a really, really, really fast recap because I'm hoping that if you're here, you're familiar with blockchain. Uh, so we're not going to talk a little bit, not a lot about that. So when we're looking about what can a customer benefit from that, we usually get to hear a few things. One of them is around cost. How can blockchain help us reduce the cost of how we operate, and especially how we operate with uh, third parties, with uh, vendors, with people that we're not trusting them inherently. And there is a cost to every operation that you're doing with someone that you're not trusting, whether it's a third, a third party, whether it's a lawyer, or uh, someone that really mitigates this risk. The second is around risk. And we are, as, as you know, a lot of the financial services have started this whole blockchain um, in, in the enterprise. We're not talking about financial services now. Uh, as, as the, the only ones that are interested in blockchain. We know that every industry is looking at that. But it's a lot about mitigating risk. How can we take the risk of doing business and, and using blockchain to lower it? And the last one is something that uh, we personally love, like to call digital transformation. I believe this is the first time you ever heard about this term. Uh, it's a very unique term in the world. But how to really take a process and reimagine and think about how this process would have come to life in a digital form, in, in the digital era, and not taking you know, a piece of paper and just making sure that that piece is digital, but really rethinking the whole process. So this is something that we see, I, I think, in every customer in the world today, and everybody is looking at that. This is a very, 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 very big uh, market. So we see 280 billion in banking industry fines, which means that this is risk that was not mitigated. Okay, that's a lot of money that could have been spared if someone could lower that risk. Uh, a lot of tax fraud and, uh, and even other industries such as contaminated food. So there's a lot of money here, partially in the U.S., but also uh, around the globe and especially here in Israel, which is, uh, I think, becoming uh, an, a blockchain hub, which is super interesting to see. So there's a lot of money. There's the need. Uh, so how can blockchain fix it? So the, I think the question that everybody is asking since the, they saw this uh, new technology. So the first thing is how to take this ledger, the way that we're storing business and making that be more secure and more trusted, especially between uh, parties. So this is how it works if you've never heard about blockchain or if you really want a quick re recap. Everybody in the network has their own identical copy, which means everybody is also participating, but also auditing, making sure that nobody's cheating. It's like a game that nobody trusts uh, the other players. So everybody has a copy and making sure that, that they're also regulating the data. And, and the ledger can only update it by a consensus. So nobody can change it without anybody else knowing. And once it's been changed, nobody else can do uh, reverse engineering. So. The idea behind blockchain is that the owner of the data, which was used to be one party, and then a lot of other parties had to mitigate that or understand how to work on that, is now owned by the process. The process, or how, how we say in Microsoft, in, in crypto we trust. So we're trusting the blockchain to manage that data. We're not trusting a specific user. That means that everybody has the same trust level in that process great thing and as, as I told you it fixes a lot of the issues around trust around uh, re reimagining the process and cost so why aren't anyone uh, everybody in Israel and around the world are using blockchain so we're talking about that a lot right this is not the first time that you've heard about that everybody's talking this uh, huge buzzword in the past two years and still we can't say we see a lot of productions not in Israel not in the world that really take blockchain Actually, every time that there's a production, there's a lot of press around that. Like that, that was, uh, I don't know, a, mir a miracle. Somebody got into production on blockchain. So how can we really take this, 
the fact that everybody knows that it should fix a lot of the issues around trust and around cost. And from the other side, not enough productions. So we're trying, hey, we're trying to really understand where's the gap here. And when we uh, took this journey and worked with our enterprises, Microsoft has worked with uh, more than 3,000 enterprise customers in the world to understand where is that gap. Why enterprises can't take blockchain and get it into production. And we saw a few things that really take a blockchain project and making it into a successful one. And if there's one slide that I really want you to remember from this, is this one. Because this is uh, from a lot of years of research within Microsoft to understand where, where can you find a good blockchain project? Uh, and where is just a buzzword? So the first thing, if the data that we're trying to do is really about asset transfer, taking something with value and moving it, uh, that would be a great place to start with blockchain. I know that there's a lot of people in a lot of areas that think that blockchain is a replacement to a database or uh, even to a distributed database. This is a really, really bad thing to do or a really bad, bad thing to think because distributed databases are, are there because of a technical problem. And as we mentioned, blockchain is a business problem. So first of all, you need to understand that there's a business issue here. There's a data that if it's breached or if it, there's a trust around that, uh, it really takes a money or it takes a toll from some, one of the players. So asset transfer is first. The second thing is cross-organizational workflow. So you have to have two different actors within the blockchain. We, we, we looked at where blockchain is initiated, where it costs money. So usually between me and another third party. Uh, if we're thinking about blockchain within, within the enterprise, the first thing that you have to ask yourself, are we not trusting one another within the same company? So if I'm working with my marketing team, do I need a blockchain between, between them because I'm not trusting them? Because if this is the case, you really need to do some you know, a work on your trust issues within the house. But for most places, you will see blockchain really rise to power when we have something of value moving between uh, uh, a few players. And the third thing that we've seen, which is a great place to start on a, a good production or even a POC blockchain, is if you have uh, auditing. So if you have something of value moving between two parties, usually what you will see is that I have one uh, version of the truth, how I store the data, and someone else has his version of the truth. Let's think about me doing something uh, of shipping. So I have a product and I'm giving it to a shipping a company that should uh, ship it around the world. So I'm writing, I gave 60 units from this product to the shipping company, but the shipping company has a different database because they're not trusting me. They have their own ERP, their own system, and there they can write that they only got 50 units. So what do we do? Uh, the, the, the box came to, to Israel, we opened it, there's 50 units. The shipping says, okay, we, we have it in store that we only got 50. And the, the other party says, but we gave you 60. This is what our ERP says. What we usually have in this asset transfer cross-organizational workflow is an auditor. So we have a lawyer or one of the big five that are coming into this process and saying, okay, you have to mitigate it somehow. So let's say that you pay them five for five units and you will take those five units and swallow them. Um, and this is exactly where blockchain can really reduce the cost. Because if we have a, 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 a workflow that is transparent and, and each time everybody knows how much units are there in this shipping process, we don't need an auditor. So we can reduce that money and that uh, process would be transparent to both of us. Instead of two versions of the truth, two ERPs, we have just one. And there's a lot of areas. Uh, we will share this slide with you, but if you want to take a picture of that as well. This is all of the productions of Microsoft with the blockchain workbench. All of the scenarios that we've managed to take into production with uh, taking a CEO or someone from the financial uh, or regulatory approval and really got it into, in the, into an area of production. So I talked a lot about manufacturing. That was also the demo from supply chain to asset tracking uh, to do a, even um, a pricing, dynamic pricing, which is a very cool thing that we'll see in a demo. Retail is really, really big around that. Not only in logistics, by the way, we also have a good, uh, so good traction around loyalty programs. So I have my point system. I don't know if El Al has its own point system. Uh, Supercell is a third point system. How can we make it a one point system for everyone and make this transaction uh, and make this asset between them? 
Insurance and banking, I'm not gonna go over it, but as I said, there's a lot of really, really specific areas where blockchain is fitted, and there's a lot of areas where it's not. So please be mindful. If it's not like blockchain is great in any place on financial services. We also had a lot of failures within financial services when the, the scenario was not really, really fine-tuned to what we just uh, uh, said. Government is big. Uh, we, currently in Microsoft, we only have one government which is actively working on, on blockchain from identity into healthcare. But I'm sensing that in this year and the, the following year, you will see more and more coming out of that. Because there's a lot from a government perspective to earn uh, into using blockchain. There's a, still a lot of, uh, I think, misconception between Bitcoin and blockchain. So they're still a, a bit scared of this uh, technology, but you will see a lot. And health, which is actually happening also here in Israel, uh, super interesting. So if you're working in one of those verticals, and if you have one of those issues that, as I said, has asset transfer, cross-organizational workflow, and auditing, this is a great place to start on blockchain. Actually, I would say, currently, this would be your best bet into production. If you haven't tailored one of those or something that moves on this, you can probably talk a lot about blockchain, but I don't see you going into production in this year. Uh, unless you're a startup and you're doing something really, really cool, which is outside of the box. But within the box, within enterprise, within uh, public sector, this is probably where uh, it's the best bet to start. So what do we do? Uh, we, we, we took our work with some of the customers, and you might have heard about what we did with Banca Poalim. If not, I urge you to Bing it or Google it, whatever you want. And, and, uh, and look about what we did with them, but also with Singapore Airlines and, and Webjet and 3M. And what we sense from this is that there's a lot of things that we're doing which are not blockchain, which are not the digital transformation or the workflow. There's a lot of pipeline and a lot of infrastructure that we need to, to build. And what we did from those kind of companies and uh, from the open source perspective of Microsoft is build a product from our experience that tries to lower the, uh, the efforts that needed to get blockchain into production and accelerate the way to production. Uh, so I'm really, really proud to, to introduce today Azure Blockchain Workbench, which is a new service. As I said, partially that service was developed here in Israel with Banca Poalim as part of our project, as part of our uh, experience with them. So what, what do we do with the blockchain uh, workbench? So if I'm looking today, we have a lot of enterprise ledgers that we're working in from Ethereum, Hyperledger, Quorum, uh, and Chain. We have a lot of SaaS tools that we want to integrate. It could be SAP, Salesforce, Dynamics, a lot of areas where the data is today. And we have a lot of client apps and devices. If we try to take the data where it's in today clients where it's today and the enterprise ledgers, you will see there's a lot of plumbing and a lot of infrastructure work that has to be done. And that actually is the hardest work on blockchain. It shouldn't be the hardest work because we're working on, not on the, on the workflow, we're working really, really on the infrastructure side, but that is where the problem is. Taking existing SaaS tools and SaaS data and getting them integrated into the ledgers and the uh, blockchain. So as I said, a lot of issues in here. And if we're talking about a few uh, businesses, so what we really want to do is focus on the business logic. We have to do a lot of uh, stuff that we don't really want to do. It's the building the client and deploy the ledgers and synchronizing and integrating existing business apps and con configuring the network and managing the keys. So if we're talking about building the business logic where we really want to be at, there's a lot of other areas that we need to focus on that nobody wants to focus on. Uh, it's like we, you want to build an app, but you have to develop the, the language to build the app. You don't want to do that. You're a business. You want to just build the app. Uh, and blockchain for enterprise was not mature enough to give you uh, this whole thing. So this is exactly what we try to do on Azure Blockchain Workbench. Just take all of the plumbing work and do that for you. Uh, managing the keys, building. Uh, uh, the entities uh, doing that with every ledger that you want to do could be enterprise, could be Ethereum, could be uh, Hyperledger, a lot of the, the, those areas. Just mitigating them into Azure Blockchain uh, Workbench. So uh, it's quickly integrating with all of your business apps, so it's working uh, with uh, what we can do on Azure to really take the data from where it's today 
the ERP, the SaaS projects, and integrating it into uh, uh, onto blockchain. And the big thing is it's without heavy lifting. Uh, so things that we did with Banca Poalim that took us two, three, and four months can be done today in five days. And we actually did this with Banca Poalim. We took the, their existing project and tried to do that using the workbench. And I think three or four months of work was uh, uh, reduced into five days because that service is really, really built on the experience of what we don't want to do and how can you do it better. So as we say, now all you need to do is just customize the integration, work the business logic, and extend the capabilities. A lot of the plumbing is not there. So if, I'm, if I want to summarize, because I'm at time, uh, blockchain is a great ledger. Two things that you need to put uh, in, in mind. One, pick the right scenario. If you're not picking the right scenario, the technology will not help you. Good one, bad one, blockchain, workbench, whatever you want. So this is why I started off with this is the scenarios, this is the workflows, make sure that you're focusing on the right workflow. And if you are, make sure you're focusing on building that specific workflow. So take something like Azure Workbench, uh, don't deal with the infrastructure at all, just focus on your business logic and on your transformation. You will see that your road to production is way easier and you're not even dealing with the heavy lifting and infrastructure of blockchain. Some areas here, if you want to see a demo of that, because I didn't have time to show you, so aka.ms, Workbench demo, and some of the documents and forums. Um, this is still on the, something that we're building. By the way, Workbench has no uh, additional cost. It's an open source project, like everything that we do. So give us feedbacks. Tell us what else you want us to do to make sure that your production uh, journey is easier. And with that, I want to thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, we have a booth outside. We're even giving a great uh, startup guide. So come talk to me, to the guys, uh, and let's uh, start this discussion. Thank you all.